play. It is the most divine activity around. When we play, we dive into our hearts. We find our true selves and we change the course of history. And here at Philosophspiel, we let our inner child loose. So, how about we philosophize? This is Philosophspiel, video game philosophy. And I'm your host, David Leibowitz. Time to get the spiel for your enlightenment. Game start. Hello everyone, this is David Leibowitz with Philosophspiel Video Game Philosophy, and I have a fellow classmate, of, a former classmate of mine, Matthew Temple, and we are going to talk about his paper um, because it was relevant to to um my johnny video which and i felt like people might want to talk to hear from the guy himself <laughs> about about stuff maybe relating to gender and media so would you like to introduce yourself matthew uh sure uh by you I mean you got my name i'm matthew i'm uh you know been a filmmaker for most of my professional career and uh decided to get a master's degree and study really you know, masculinity uh in, in media obviously there's been a lot of work on uh sort of feminist uh view of of gender in media uh and certainly a lot of sort of queer theory looking at uh, queer representations in media um but not quite as much really looking at uh sort of men and masculinity as its own um sort of field worth really looking at. So, um, so that's basically what I did. Um, so I guess that's probably what we're talking about today, huh? Yes, we are. We are talking about that. All right. How about let's just go into something right now and I'll show you, I have a few things to show you and, and we'll see what you think of them. This is sure. a non-binary character I've been telling you about in Guilty Gear, which is what my channel has been definitely. Um, I'm hardly dressed for a party. Sorry to intrude. I don't intend to start anything. I'm just one person passing through. Is that really so odd? Well then, to a dazzling encounter. What's wrong? That wasn't like you. Fine then, you have until my tea is ready. Let us begin. To me, this place you so desperately guard is a mere walking trail. What kind of indulgence could be sweeter? Here I thought you would understand. I used to carry myself like some sort of demon too. Even though I was surrounded by accepting people. I'd say it's time for a tea break. Milk and sugar for you. What would you make of so is it so what do you make of that what do you make of that in terms of gender and the um and, and the bending of masculinity to, to something non binary? Do you make anything of it or is it still fit your paradigm perfectly? <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know that I have a paradigm uh, <laughs> to be fit perfectly. Um, I think that would sort of assume that that there is a certain sort of way things are, um, uh, and the way things are very often more sort of sort of what is the uh, sort of cultural or social understanding around something. So mm -hmm. the first thing that I noticed. So I should say that I don't know anything about this video game. As I've you never should, been as you shouldn't, as you, as you shouldn't, you shouldn't know anything about okay. it. I, I'm just showing well, you. Well, that's like, good. I'm, that's I'm, good. I mean, so, these are uh, blind reactions, my friends. They are. Um, uh, I mean, the first thing I noticed uh, is that it looks like this uh, character is a uh, born female non-binary character. At least that's how they're presented, uh, which is a lot more palatable uh, sort of for our culture, um, both sort of culture at large, but also uh, the uh, the number of non-binary people who are born female is much, much higher. It's a much higher number. Um, 
and sort of the uh, because in some ways you could say that you know that being non-binary is another way of saying sort of stretching what gender means to an individual who chooses to present or live their lives as non-binary um it's a safer space for born female people to live into than it is for people born male. Uh, so we also don't see it very often. What would it mean for a non-binary person to look like me? You know, I'm bald in a, in a, in a beard, uh, and yet I could be non-binary. Um, uh, because that's, you know, that, because that is ultimately a gender, you know, part of a gender expression. Um, and but we don't see that very often and phil hammock who actually uh, is a uh, professor at uc santa cruz in psychology and actually shared a uh, thesis advisor with you and i at university of chicago um, has done a lot of work on on studying teenagers in uh, particularly in queer teenagers and one of the things that he's also noticed is like where the where are the born males in in this conversation so that's one thing that just jumped right out at me um is uh sort of we can know that um you know it's something that we you know this idea of that character being non-binary i can look at it and be like I, is it you know that's somewhat because that's also an artist's interpretation of what non-binary means so either you know that could be a non-binary artist who is creating a non-binary character that represents how they understand the you know what that means um and it can also be uh, someone who is not non-binary, uh, creating a character that they find sort of sexy and attractive and you know, mysterious and still works within that, you know, within that, you know, that, that particular frame that they're building. So that's what jumps out at me right away. Um, and I don't know what else makes, you know, the, a depiction of a fighting character, uh, necessarily what makes it non-binary. Um, but I think it's an important thing, right? Uh, I, I do think it's important to begin to sort of, you know, bend those things to allow expressions of gender that uh, can really be uh, broader. I think that's sort of just, it's beneficial. If And when I say beneficial, um, that that's not even sort of like a, a social uh, perspective as far as sort of changing society or whatever that is, but it's beneficial in that, um, you know, you know, in, in life itself, the idea to be sort of challenged with new ideas is actually very beneficial to expand the way anybody thinks. And so, uh, so taking something that's out of a norm, uh, in, you know, norm in air quotes and moving that a little bit from what is sort of easily or obviously recognized is just beneficial for anybody. So I'm going to cut you in a little bit and actually say that this character's more meant to actually be portrayed as an effeminate male okay. testament was originally male slash it was Got male it. slash androgynous was referred to as female sometimes but was seen okay. as biologically male and then trans came out as non-binary in this game here's the, this is their original design this is their Got it so actually now that now that you're now that you're showing me it interesting now that you're showing me a a still image uh, i can certainly see that the the degraded quality that I was looking at over um, uh, over the video that you were playing definitely looked quite a bit different, but I can see that. Yeah. No, um, I, actually, what I, said I thought, still I thought stands that, I thought that you were virtually just yeah. churn testament to be female, but no testament is, is non-binary. Okay. There is actually original weird yeah. reason for it because they are technically now like part machine part, like quote unquote gear, which makes them technically not really have a gender. So it's mm -hmm. a little different than the other character that comes be, that comes out as trans for more for deciding to be so, but they definitely come up like the, their whole deal with like tea and stuff and having a bubble bath. Mm -hmm. Like Testament was like a vicious re reaper of death, and now they're a complete pacifist. Don't want to do anything, just want to mind their own business. So yeah, they'll they'll, they'll they'll fight you if they need to, but they don't want to. So I'm also looking at this this picture that you're showing me here, um, and I see sort of a few of them here, uh, and it's interesting that to me that an artist, one of the ways that they may be also expressing the uh, sort of the born male concept, yeah, uh, could be in sort of the musculature, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, and I'm looking at this one still image, the largest one that you have up on the screen. Yeah, this that's one is the, the original, like character's original image. design, like when they originally yeah. shown, and then in, in this remake, in this new adaptation, this is how they are seen as. So, but yeah, yeah I think it's an interesting depiction. Yeah, I guess so. It's I don't know if I've actually ever seen in gaming, rarely even in TV, a non-binary character. So, and the, also the good news is that they're voiced. They're, they're not voiced by a non-binary actress um, actor, but they are voiced by a, a, a male to female trans person. So they got someone down at least that's sort of in that area. So, right, very much. interesting. Yeah, I mean, would you say like the effeminate? Like, I mean, they were very much like I want tea. Or like, it's just a very. I mean, it generally just yeah it comes off as an effeminate, but the fact that you saw the character as female demonstrates that they're doing their good job by demonstrating the andro androgyny of the character for sure uh yeah. i think that yeah i think so all right so i guess how does that now transition the broader thing of your general idea of your the of, of 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 your paper and what you argued well i mean it's really you know the argument that i was looking at uh and and going into was um well was sort of a, a, a couple parts, but um, that, uh, you know, the way that um, what I was really looking at since I was interviewing creators and was sort of looking at how they consider men and masculinity is in, in the larger discourse of, of representation mm -hmm. and gender in sort of the yeah, in, the, in sort of the current climate in in the world of entertainment, mm -hmm. um, and you know, one of the things that I found is that it's not actually giving a lot of of sort of direct consideration. So even when we look at the character that you just shown in the conversation we're having, that these are conversations that are being had in part because that character is not a uh, a born male presenting as a man. Right. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I think it seems to be something worth talking about. Um, I would be just as happy talking about a character that is created that is uh, born male presenting as a man. And what are the sort of depictions and how that particular how those characters are played out into a certain binary mm -hmm. that um, that ultimately, I think, is not also particularly helpful. Uh, um, and what I mean by that is that what we see over and over and over again is generally a version of the same thing. Um, so uh, one of the pieces and terms that you used in the podcast that you're referencing was this idea of hegemonic masculinity, which was put forth by R.W. Connell back in the 90s. Um, the fact that a lot of your listeners probably aren't familiar with the term is a little bit surprising and not. I mean, I've, I've been interested and focused on uh, gender, men, and masculinity for a long time. Uh, it's what I decided to go and really focus on in my, uh, you know, in my, in my master's work. Um, and the focus on that was like, well, uh, uh, you know, anyways, I should say, so I, I, sh I, doing my research and I stumble across some really great work that's been done that as someone who has read a lot of uh, not necessarily academic work in men and masculinities, but certainly a lot of uh, the broad spectrum of, uh, of either sort of lay work or popular work or pop psychology work. Um, this idea of masculinities, a plural was not, is not something that is, uh, fairly well known or discussed uh, outside of the field of men of, of men and masculinities. Um, so even in sort of feminist discourse or sort of the broader sort of gender and sexuality discourse, the idea of masculinities is not discussed, which I find weird because one of the things we are talking about is, and I'm going to put this in air quotes again, is like toxic masculinity, um, which has become sort of a, a divisive word as it were because the idea that there is only one kind of masculinity means that if you say it's toxic then therefore it sort of relates to all all masculinities as opposed to a particular expression of it right mm -hmm. so um you know a kind of jokingly that you know that nobody ever has a problem with the fact that there are toxic mushrooms 
that doesn't upset the most avid lover of fungi dishes in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I love mushrooms yeah. and yet I don't love toxic ones. Um, and that's nothing against lion's mane. <laughs> that is nothing against portobellas. Uh, it, uh, it is something against nightcaps. Um, I won't eat those. So, uh, but this sort of this broader idea that there is only one way and also that masculinity is, uh, is automatically associated with men. And I think so now men and masculinity become conflated. Uh, so I could just say, Hey, I've been studying masculinity, but that would be bogus. Are we frozen? We're back. Okay. Where did you lose me? Um, about men and masculinity being conflated. Yeah. So they're just simply not right. I mean, they, they, they are, there's a connection, but they are not the same thing. And I think that becomes really important. So you brought up this idea of sort of hegemonic masculinity, which is a term that's slightly less used now because hegemony ultimately as a concept is a, a relationship. Um, and it's generally, a, it's a relationship of dominance or power. Um, and dominance or power can be very different things. Um, you know, one of the studies that began to sort of loosen the grip of the idea of, of hegemonic masculinity was um, now uh, on the spot, I'm going to forget the scholar's name, but was basically sort of uh, doing research in, in uh, schools, high, high schools in England, and found that there were, you know, that there was a culture in this one school where basically like, you know, bullying was not acceptable. So, so, uh, he talked about this moment where a kid is bullying another kid. Uh, and in the process, a group of his peers basically uh, put a kibosh to the situation and elicited and basically got the guy to apologize, right? So in that case, uh, sort of open communication or non-bullying as a principle is actually hegemonic in that particular instance. So to say hegemonic masculinity is somehow negative would also not necessarily be correct. Um, so toxic masculinity, I don't think is always a, a helpful term. Uh, dominant masculinity is also not a hundred percent accurate. So there's kind of this like broad way of looking at it, but to break masculinity into many different places, because there can be, um, uh, you know, there could be, well, as Connell's kind of brought out too, there's, um, oh, uh, like subordinate masculinities, there's uh, complicit masculinities, but then you can also go into um, uh, um, like equitable masculinity. There can be all sorts of different ways of expressing that side of the pull of the way humans are. Mm -hmm. So, um, masculinity and femininity are just poles that's in some ways you could call it, say it's sort of yin and yang. They're just different yes. poles. And, mm-hmm. and we've definitely like in the West, I mean, all over the world now, we like to sort of associate men with masculinity in the certain way that we perceive it. But masculinity, again, ask them what, what masculinity is, and they might give you very, very different things. But generally, one of the answers uh, is, well, when you think of it stereotypically, and then follows what we think, understanding, there's always a sort of uh, this uh, caveat at the beginning, which is, I don't know that this is accurate, but it's just what I see around me, and it's what most people say, mm-hmm. right? So, um, so anyway, so I kind of like bring all that up, because when we talk about masculinity, it's actually could be really helpful to, to stop talking about masculinity as a singularity or as a monolith. Um, but like, you're a man, uh, I'm assuming that you have, you know, that when uh, you are considering yourself, you may or may not consider yourself, you're going to consider yourself that you have masculine qualities, whether you can, and you might say, I'm not like a masculine man. Um, and yet, at the same time, like, how dumb is that? Like you are, you just might also have a lot of feminine qualities and, and places where they blend, but to somehow, uh, you know, and if someone, you know, was basically to call you, you know, a girl or call you a pussy or call you, you know, sort of like anything that's conflates who you are or the way you act, 
with something that's feminine as something that's sort of less than or something that's not masculine, therefore not fully male. Like, come on, like, you know, man up, be, you know, uh, you know, you know, grow up here, all of these things are like conflating all these things that just don't belong together. Um, and one of the things when it comes into like video games or in popular media is that all, when we see these things over and over and over again, they just become the reality that we live in, mm -hmm. even if it's not reality as in, you know, capital R reality, but it's the reality that we're in, mm -hmm. right? You know, men are tougher, men are, you know, you know, if you want to go down your like uh, Jordan Peterson rabbit hole, which I don't, <laughs> but you know, it's like, well, men get paid more because, you know, they have different priorities. Um, you know, uh, they're willing to work 80 hours a week and, you know, crappy conditions in order to make a billion dollars a year or whatever, you know, it's like, so you see what I'm saying? It's like the, to begin to sort of break some of these things apart. So that way, what we're seeing in the media is always this thing that just sort of reinforces something that is not true, but it is, <laughs> it's our truth. It's our reality, mm -hmm. but not the truth or not the reality. Yeah. And I think like, I think that with, if we think in this, and we talked a little bit in the past about Jung and I think the masculine and feminine aspects of the self, and you feel like that there, these are possibly outdated, that gender should not be defined as anything. And it really shouldn't. There are many sides to the man, but Jung would actually say in the masculine ideas that there is the, there's a lover and the lover is not um, this man who just wants to bang everyone. He's, he's the one who wants to, who is, can't, who basically has all those feminine qualities. Um, the magician, very, I mean, the masculine also though, is it's generally this binary that masculine is intelligent is weirdly. I think that masculine is also intelligence while feminine is far more emotionality. Um, which is so which is fine those are those are just those are just poles right poles. and it doesn't and it doesn't matter uh what becomes odd is that uh, mm -hmm. or can be challenging for actually everybody is that somehow now masculine as in you know more intellectual or rationality or whatever this other you know crap is that is somehow that is therefore men are more likely to sort of to live in that domain Exactly, um, it's not true. It's, it's not just true. not the case. Right? There's exactly. just no the, the there's no evidence that shows that, except <laughs> except in our lives, it's proven every day that that's the case because we're told that's the case and that's what we're shown and therefore we also all begin to live into that, right? Like I believe that it's somehow like my duty not to, you know, exp you know not to get too emotional in certain situations, right? Like keep my cool, keep my calm. Um, you know, we also see the react, you know, we see the the byproduct of that is, you know, men commit, you know, over 90% of violent crime. So, uh, you know, violent crime is generally a crime of passion. Oops, I guess that kind of like hurts that narrative a little bit. Um, but it also supports the narrative that men are supposed to do that. Therefore, but you can't because you're human. So therefore, it's going to come out in some other ways. It's going to be self-harm. Men are, uh, you know, five times more likely to commit suicide whether it's harming others, men are about 10 times more likely or nine to 10 times more likely to, you know, commit violent crime. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the uh, opioid epidemic you know, impacted men uh, at, at, at higher rates. Um, so you can kind of put that into this sort of the self-harm section. Mm -hmm. um, so that I think becomes sort of that, that challenge. Uh, that would be really good for everybody. And I, I, I'm my interest in that too, is that when I kind of look at in, since we're talking about video games, if you want to pull up something else, we can look at it, but sort of these ideas that, you know, that, that, you know, that men and masculinity are presented in this way, um, just kind of ingrains what we believe and then what we see and what we can continually go out and find in the world, but actually doesn't benefit anybody. Oh, my, my, thank you for your undivided attention. At last, I've penetrated the facility. These images are coming to you live from inside this steamy paradise. But I've yet to have any charming encounters. Could this hot fog be the cause? It's like steam rising from sweat. My body's tingling with excitement. Crap, the 
place is so wrong in so many ways. I remember it being kind of like this on Yukiko's show, too. No, it wasn't like this. Those voices again. Wait, are they louder this time? These voices? I was wondering whose they could be since it's only the victim in here. Is it the people watching outside? You mean everybody who's watching the Midnight Channel? They're reacting to the show? Yikes! If people are watching Kanji Kun now, he's gonna be a legend in a way he never intended. Well, it's really his shadow, not him. But normal people won't know that. The shadows are getting really restless. The Man, here. Really want, aren't I? Hell no! Oh, how I hate girls. So arrogant and self centered. They cry if you get angry, they gossip behind your back, they spread nasty lies, they look at me like some. some disgusting thing and say that I'm a weirdo! Laughing at me all the while. You like to sew? What a queer! Painting is so not you. But you're a guy. You don't act like a guy. Why aren't you manly? What does it mean to be a guy? What does it mean to be manly? Girls are so scary. I ain't scared of them. Men are much better. They'd never say those awful, degrading things. Yes, I vastly prefer men. Hell with that! What makes you think you can say that shit with my face? Why, you're me. And I'm you. You do know that, don't you? No. No. uh No way! There's no way in hell that you're me! <laughs> you're me, and there's no denying it! All right. What do you think of that so far? Um. So uh, I don't. Once again, I don't know anything about what exactly. As you, as you shouldn't. Um, but okay. You know, young, right? <laughs> a, a bit. Um, you know what a shadow is? Well, yes. That's a shadow. Uh, this is a young game. <laughs> yeah. And his shadow is that he's effeminate. Is that he has he likes feminine things and he thinks he's gay. He might be gay. Got it. And he's um, a very masculine presenting man who secretly likes to sew and likes cute things <laughs> and may like like men. Yeah. So, uh, and so therefore is a little bit in the sort of female bashing type of thing in order to sort of validate or or uh, prove that he is not uh, not those things. Is that kind of what's going on? I would, I guess so. For, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, oh boy. Uh, I can't say I know exactly what to say about you know, what, what I, you know, what I think about that. Um, uh, I mean, any, every, pretty much everything I'm saying here anyways, I'm just kind of sort of riffing. Right. So it's not like there's a, you know, I'm not going to, you know, stand by this and be like, oh, this is, you know, I'm speaking some amount of truth or something like that, because I mm -hmm. definitely don't think so. Um, I uh, sort of sort of snap judgments, um, you know, I, that conversation is certainly a conversation that people are having, right? Like I have to be one or the other, right? Am I gay is actually a bit of a question that comes from a binary culture. Right, like if we had a little bit, if if we if so, let me kind of like back up. Um, I've never, you know, uh, the heterosexual people that I know never came out, never had to come out as heterosexual, mm -hmm. right? And part of that is that uh, you know every every like every story that I heard growing up as a kid, uh, and a lot of us still are, you know. Uh, you know, it's like a husband and a wife. It's the, you know, it's the, you know, it's like the prince and the princess. It's, you know, um, you know, all the books, the literature, uh, sort of, you know, what we see around, around us. And obviously these things are slowly, slowly shifting a little bit where you might see, you know, a, you know, a commercial with gay parents or something like that. But, um, 
but it's kind of so deeply ingrained that the assumption for the most part is, uh, you know, that I'm supposed to, you know, as a, you know, as a born male, I'm supposed to, you know, want to get married and have kids or something like that. Um, and I know it, it impacts a lot of, you know, it does impact a lot of men, uh, who are, you know, in cultures that are, you know, where the sort of, you know, having, you know, uh, a family, having children, having a wife, having these things is just like so paramount that um, there can be a lot of sort of a lot of shame or a lot of even just trying to like neglect this thing. So therefore, it has to come into dialogue a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, Sorry about that. We are on a a limited plan for Zoom, so we're back. So could you continue what you were fill people in what you were talking about? Your uh, everything was saved. Everything you said was okay. saved. So yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, you know, yeah, it was just kind of you know the the again kind of going into you know into the binaries. It's got to be sort of either or, or we have to sort of you know this thing of am I gay? Am I like what am I? Do I like do I have to like even this idea of me having to hide something? I mean, I think what it's sort of shown and one of the things that. Uh, that as different sort of forms of media begin to sort of show these other things, it does two things. One is it shows what's possible, right? Um, and the other, it also normalizes. Uh, so if you spend a lot of time in this world, I'm just gonna kind of go with this, two things can be normalized. One is that, oh, like maybe I should be ashamed of, you know, liking to knit. Um, I think that's what you're so, like uh, whatever, you know? Um, of finding boys attractive um you know where does it have to go to in order to do that i have to sort of you know it has to become a thing of disliking uh girls or disliking things like that you know but um uh but yeah just kind of this the this kind of these things these conversations we're having is because you 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 almost have to ask these questions because anything besides what is around us most common is is not a given uh and depending on sort of the level of acceptance uh in a culture that shifts how much uh sort of uh inner velocity i need to overcome you know some sort of sort of blockade to my own you know own sort of range of self expression mm -hmm. All right. Let let me show you the the finishing of this. Um, Good. Oh, damn it. Kanji kun. Wait, Yukiko. Something's wrong. It's still coming at us. Kanji is still rejecting it. Well, I can't blame him with this many witnesses. Such a passionate approach. What? I think that you three would make wonderful boyfriends. Stop it! You got it all wrong! Enough. Stop! What the hell are you blabbering about? I don't care who wrote someone! Anyone please accept me! Stop it! Accept me for who I am! Whoa, whoa! I really don't swing that way! I said, stop it! <laughs> Can't believe something like this is inside me. Kanji, you're... Yeah, I know. I've known all this time I had something like you. It ain't a matter of guys or chicks. I'm just scared shitless of being rejected. I'm a total pansy who tries to make everyone hate me. Come on, get up. Anyone who looks like me, I know they ain't so weak that they can't take a punch. I already know that you're me. You're me. And I'm you, damn it. So, 
Ma Matthew, I don't see your camera. You there, Matthew? Matthew, you muted. Matthew, you there? I am. Yeah. Uh, I think my, may or I may not have saved that. What? It may or may not have saved that. No, it saved it. It definitely it saved it. Okay. Well, what do you think? I saw you smiling. I saw it. I saw you smiling. You can't. You can't reject me. That you, that that was actually good media. Well, well, yes and no. I mean, I mean, it's not, I'm, it's not great, but um, no. I mean, I, I, I mean, as far as sort of storytelling, you know, if you want to talk about, is it a little bit on the nose? Maybe. Um, I don't necessarily. I, so that's kind of why I was smiling. Was like, oh, like this is actually saying something, right? Like unintentionally saying something. Uh, you know, it's probably some of the things that get like uh, that get people uh, to uh, um, to reject certain things. Like, oh, they're basically just telling me this, right? Like, they're sort of like this is where the sort of like pushing the agenda kind of thing sort of can come up. Um, I don't have a uh, you know. I don't have an issue with it, um, but it is also, you know, moderately on the blatant side of basically sort of trying to sort of uh, normalize other, you know, non-heteronormative ways of being. That's totally fine. I guess is that is that, um, is that but can you say more about that? I mean, yes, it was on the nose, but I guess uh, the fact that that this was from I believe this game came out in 2010, so. So a oh, while wow. ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of just kind of like beginning to figure out sort of like what is this? And 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 um, you know, some of sometimes when things are on the nose, it's because it's bad writing, and sometimes it's because uh there's there are not enough sort of cultural shorthands to know what someone is trying to say without just coming out and saying it. Right. Um so uh so I can't say exactly where this falls on that, but I think it's, you know, it's totally, I mean, it's playing with this idea that you can, you know, I mean, of course it's, is, you know, the thing is, is that sort of gay or straight is also sort of part of a binary. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, you know, so, um, and sort of like, you know, putting your stake, you know, putting a stake in the ground. I mean, while we're kind of having this conversation, um, uh, you know, people who are, I mean, I think there's, there is a, a challenge with sort of, I mean, non-binary when someone presents that way, like you kind of have this thing. And I used to have this a long time ago that was crazy. And I've fortunately gotten rid of it. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not a child anymore. So I sort of, you know, I mean, I was born in the seventies. Um, so I was, you know, I was in my, I was in my twenties, uh, um, you know, when, when states were, you know, passing constitutional amendments to to outlaw uh, or to ban, you know, same sex marriage, for example. Um, uh, so, you know, so I'm that's just kind of like my, you know, that's just kind of for context, because for a long time, if I saw someone and I couldn't tell if they were a male or a female, it's like it bothered me. Mm -hmm. Not like bothered me. Uh, sort of a morally or anything, but there was something that was that was subtly disconcerting. Mm. Like I needed to know, and eventually I started to wonder. And it wasn't until I made it conscious. Why do I need to know? Why is that the Why is that the metric that I need to understand of this person? Not like are they happy? Are they sad? Were they abused as a child? Or like do they speak five languages? Like those are all just metrics, and I didn't give a shit about those metrics. But somehow whether or not they had a penis or a vagina really mattered to my like internal compass. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it does for a lot of people, which is also, I think where you get a lot of vitriol, right? Like, like, you know, what are you a man or a woman or whatever? Like, why do you care? Right? Because there's a something that's so deeply ingrained in our culture that we want to know that now, I don't think that's the, the same reaction for a lot of younger people growing up. 
course, not everyone grows up in, you know, in, uh, in accepting communities of, uh, you know, of, of non-binary ways of understanding gender and sex. Um, but, uh, you know, but as someone who's like, I feel like I'm a pretty, uh, malleable thinker and that was a challenge for me to overcome. Right. So, um, and that I, I just that that can become because so why why is why is that the piece and uh, and just kind of like relating that you know to the to the last thing that you showed um, is like it's got to be sort of one or the other right like whoa he's like, why can't you like want to go like why can't you want to like like boxing and knitting mm -hmm. there is no contradiction there we've decided that it's a contradiction but it's not. Um, I like football and knitting. I have a little bit of a problem that I like football as much as I do. I think like the NFL, I think kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> uh, just as like an institution, yeah. um, uh, all the way around. I think it's, you know, like with the head injuries and all this stuff that's happening, it's like, it's just not a great thing, but I like it. I like watching football. Um, uh, I'll watch figure skating pretty happily. I think it, like a couple, like the couple's figure skating is beautiful. People are wearing flowy stuff, right? To me, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I like backpacking in the woods for days on end without seeing any, without seeing anybody and being able to be, you know, uh, sort of survival, at, you know, survive out in the wilderness. I take a bit of pride in that. And, you know, at the same time, I, I love classical music and ballet and opera. Um, to me, those things are not contradictory <laughs> at all, but I know culturally they are a little bit, right? Uh, so therefore kind of even what you're showing is this thing of like, oh, like even like that last little line, you know, anyone who's like me can take a punch in the face. Maybe like if we can all take a punch in the face, this is the reality, <laughs> but should we pride ourselves on that? I don't know. It's definitely leans toward that thing we're talking about of this sort of in air quotes, again, sort of masculine thing of like being a man is like, I can take it on the chin. Right. Like, sure. We all can, you know, I mean, uh, the amount of domestic violence that happens in the world, dude, women can take it on the chin as well as any man can, uh, you know, and the numbers show that, um, but doesn't mean they should, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and maybe like, I just, don't, I really don't want to get hit in the face, to be honest. Me too. Yeah. I don't, it's not something I've been hit in the face, right? That scar on my, the scar I have on my face was because I was hit in the face. Don't need to, I did not need that in my life. Um, and, you know, as a, you know, masculine male man person, <laughs> uh, like I didn't also have to say that I've been, you know, that I, you know, that I have a scar on my face from being punched. I could have left, left that alone. But why did I even choose to say that out loud? What part of my identity is sort of validated by that? I don't know. Hmm. All right. Well, what do we, so then what are, do, do we want to, do we want to discuss the other side of the, of the coin of, I guess, there, there's um, women being quote unquote badass. Does that, does that, um, like that we definitely, this giving you game didn't have that at original. Well, it had Samus. That was, of course, the big surprise is that uh, this, this, um, this alien bounty hunter is a, is a, is a woman. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to show you something slightly more recent. Um, okay. Is you think that would, would help? Like why this doesn't help or actually hurts maybe? We'll see. Yeah, let's 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 take one more clip and and dig All in. Right. All right.
can be quite a pain. So why does it, why does this um the argument about the about the sexuality of the character is is one thing just women using guns is this they yes they know the game always like every of the three installments there's a part where her clothes come off and and she has her transformation into that game's outfit um mm -hmm. it's definitely yeah she literally turns takes off her clothes to summon demons and stuff so there is that and we can talk about that um but is this a problem is this, is this is this just going into the masculinity i could uh i mean i once again i don't necessarily i mean uh is it i mean first of all i think that when it comes to a lot of video games and a lot of you know uh comics and and sort of action movies but or anything it's like one of the things that it kind of sort of falls in line of uh it kind of says that um the better you can do violence like the mm. better it is for you know for you right for you know the victor as it were you know it's uh um so there's a little bit of this i mean there's a little bit of a boringness in that storytelling trope um i mean it sells right which means that it's not boring to audiences mm -hmm. um there's something either cathartic or something that people like about it um but that is kind of like the underlying theme is do you do who does violence best mm -hmm. um in this case um you know and a lot of times what we what we do is we break up again masculine and feminine into you know and the pull of by of sort of physical violence um can sort of fall in the masculine pole which is fine if that's where it it belongs and perhaps uh sort of clever violence um might sort of fall in on the other side of the pole um i don't know that that actually really even belongs there you know and there's some sort of like esoteric uh, uh middle eastern sort of judaic christian uh and other sort of middle eastern ideas of this you know the you know lucifer and aramon right uh is sort of two sides of evil um and they're very very different right you know Armon is perhaps more mechanistic so uh and whereas lucifer is going to be more conniving right i mean lucifer is you know the you know light being right um so you know lucifer was very intelligent lucifer was you know was the ego was uh, a very different sort of type of evil than armonic evil as it were um but also as an expression to to even sort of take these things and say this is masculine or feminine i don't know if that's the right you know and when i say binary i don't know if the, you know what i mean is like those are not necessarily why are we now putting those on that pole why do we why do we need to to put a certain type of violence on that particular pole that may actually have nothing to do with with gender and sexuality mm -hmm. um it does in our culture for sure um uh but as that being sort of like masculine is more uh you know is more violent maybe you know that might be then that might be a pole um uh you know and you know again you know people who have you know who parents who have a son and a daughter will bear you know i've heard so many so many times oh well it's just very it's very different right boys and girls are very different um and that that's just inherent or innate uh there are uh there are cultures where that's just not actually the case which kind of debunks that theory a bit um but it very much is in ours um and it can also come down to how people speak to children um so uh i think i lost you again <clears throat> sorry that was my dad came in okay um so anyway i think that uh you know when it uh you know this but there is a piece of saying that now like that that female character that you just showed um is like there's definitely an idea that somehow that's a more empowered female character that that's good that we have female characters doing that too which is another way of saying that when females act as males have typically been portrayed in story and media that therefore that is a net benefit uh, i don't i don't i don't buy that um i i don't think that it is of course um 
I don't necessarily think that um, not doing that is necessarily an issue. But once again, it's like, is that, you know, uh, there's a little bit of, of a value judgment that is connected to how men present as better, which is why when we see girls kicking ass, sometimes like, yeah, you know, girl power. Um, and it's like, wait, is that girl power when girls act the way, way like boys or men have acted and in ways that we sometimes see as not necessarily beneficial to a healthy society. And by that, I mean, violence is not really, you know, beneficial to a healthy society. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, even if you say in war, oh, it's great that we, you know, have military that defends us, right? But in that process, um, we are engaging in violence and we know, and there's enough studies now that show that when when soldiers come back from war, that they deal with a lot of mental health issues, mm -hmm. right? So to somehow glorify something that we know has really sort of challenging ramifications, um, and yet we still glorify that is a little bit you know, there's something to be questioned in there. So um, I think there's always a little something to be questioned when I don't think that, you know, that when we say, oh, because we've seen so many, you know, dirty Harry's and, or, or uh, you know, Clint Eastwood types or whatever, right? That somehow shooting is masculine and, you know, killing the other person is like, you know, is, is there's a virtue in that, in victory, uh, in violent victory. I just don't, I don't know. I think it's, it's, it's just a question. It's not like a right or a wrong. I mean, we also live in a world where like you can be, you know, like we see what happens to, to, you know, peaceful peoples. A lot of times they're genocided, <laughs> you know, it's like, Oh, you know, like the chair, you know, whatever they're the Cherokee or there was, you know, the, you know, there were, you know, uh, Tibetans, right. It's like, Oh, great. Like, let's just, you know, kill them and take their land and, you know, lock them up and whatever, because they're not going to fight us. Um, you know, we see that all the time. We see it with Native Americans, we saw it with Tibetans, um, or it's, you know, basically who's stronger. So you have, uh, you know, Armenians, there's always, there's always some group that's being, you know, violently oppressed by somebody else. And that makes us kind of sad, right? Like, I'm sad that a lot of like, you know, peaceful societies have been just destroyed over the years. And so then you can say, well, violence, there's a place for it. And, um, okay. But the veneration of that and then the connecting of that to masculinity becomes a little bit like, it's just worth bringing into question. So I look at that character and I think, yeah, I always like, you know, seeing girls kick ass. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, but I also know that to me is, you know, that, that I don't necessarily think that's a good thing. <laughs> even if I do like to see that more. Right. Well, I guess how do, so what, so what are the actual answers? I feel like I'm, I'm, there are definitely men that are carrying figures. I mean, um, in video games and I feel like I try to find those, but the, but how do we, what, what men, what, what, what masculine, what men do we need to, do we just need to see more, homosexually like presenting men or do we just need men that are not kicking ass or just men yeah or the just the complexity of what that means you know uh showing it in different ways one of the things that my research since you brought me on originally because of my paper that i thought was that was particularly interesting which was that in my entire group of of you know of research subjects as it were um i interviewed men and women uh I interviewed, uh, and in that group, there was nobody who was non-binary or trans, um, but they're, you know, a gay man and someone who openly identifies as bisexual, um, women of color, men, uh, men of color. Um, and one of the things that really jumped out at me was when I, I asked a question, what were books, uh, TV and movies that had a major influence on you as a person or, and, or as a creator, everybody mentioned stories that were by white cis hetero men or about white cis hetero men, everybody, not a single white cis hetero man mentioned something that was written by a woman or a gay person or I should say a queer person, uh, um, or a person of color, it turns out with one exception, one person who was uh, a straight man who, uh, 
who uh, became famous for uh, musicals, uh, musical film and television, um, had Mary Poppins. But that was the only sort of outlier. Otherwise, white men, that was their their whole sort of inspiration set. Women also had women. <laughs> people of color also had people of color. Uh, queer people also had queer people, either as creators or stars of the influential stories or literature in their lives. So ultimately, when you're asking this question, I think one of the pieces that we often overlook is that, you know, it's important for minorities to be represented, right? For minorities to be able to see yourself there. There's something that's like, oh, I'm not alone, or, you know, or, you know, what, how I can imagine myself being when I, you know, I, I uh, directed a documentary called Hardball, the Girls of Summer. Um, and the um, right now I'm forgetting his name. It's been a while since I made the movie, but he was the uh, second uh, black man to be a general manager of uh, in of a of a major league baseball team, and he very clearly spoke about how um, if it weren't for the fact that he like he had been in baseball his whole life, and as soon as the first black man became a general manager, it became possible for him. He's like, oh, well, if he can do it, I can do it, and it worked, right? So that's where representation is, can be very important. But on the flip side of it is that if, if you only know your own story, you're actually limiting your breadth of knowledge. So in many ways, the white men in my study, uh, and this is a good, interesting thing for even for your listeners to kind of look at is like, what are the influential pieces in my life? And are those people all like me? Because if that's the case, then there's a very, very homogenous and sort of narrow scope of understanding mm -hmm. that as soon as you add in sort of other identities, the breadth of of understanding actually widens. And so I think that, you know, when I bring this up is that, you know, what is the answer? There is no the answer, David. But what mm -hmm. there is, is like, as, you know, if you're, as you're playing games, as you're watching movies, if you are, you know, are creating work or whatever, it's actually to expose yourself to the things that are not you, that are not comfortable, maybe that are like outside of what makes sense to you, mm -hmm. right? Because then you have like, you know, in our world, particularly after, you know, me too, a lot of, you know, it was like not all men or, you know, whatever that thing was or black lives matter become, well, all lives matter or whatever. It's like, now you're still just talking about your own experience and you're not actually getting to know the experience of the other, but the other knows your experience. So they're smarter than you. They have way greater insight to the world than you have because you know, like in my case, like, okay, I know like the cis white male like viewpoint. And if I don't really and deeply expose myself to the other or not, like I need to understand this so I can argue against it, but I need to understand this so I can live into it. Then that just broadens up who I am. Um, and I think that's what becomes important. So we're talking about masculinity is actually opening up what, you know, what, what boys are exposed to or what, you know, what it is to sort of be a man. Like I'm perfectly happy being a man. Um, and there's a lot of advantages that come with being a man, um, like walking home alone after dark is a great advantage, for example. Um, but there's also a lot of disadvantages and those, uh, um, and yet men are kind of like basically told that the disadvantages are something that we don't talk about or, um, uh, or something even to be proud of, right? So a disadvantage might be um, uh, a sort of, less honed ability to express feeling and emotion or recognize feeling and emotion, right? Uh, and a lot of men take pride in that. And then a lot of men also, once again, five times more likely than, than women, you know, men are more likely to put a bullet in their forehead, right? So that is actually a consequence of what we think is so great about being a man. So I think that's just kind of like at the end, like there's no answer. Um, but uh, But there are ways of, of expanding what any of this stuff means. Uh, and it actually makes things harder. As human beings, we're, you know, the sort of uh, social psychological term would be uh, cognitive misers. Anything that, that, that 
that challenges our thinking too much is hard. We don't like it, right? Like that, I'm having to think and thinking just uses a ton of calories. Human beings have, have, have been, have developed over centuries or millennia to try and think as little as possible. So as soon as we start to recognize patterns, like, yeah, dudes are this way, chicks are that way, you know, that the end, because I don't have brain space and power to be questioning all these things. What's happening right now is we live in a world where there are people who are questioning it and it's pissing some people off. So as a 40 something year old going back to college, I have been aware for a long time about uh, how to address people by their preferred pronouns. And yet I screwed up all the time, all the time. And I felt kind of bad about it because I don't like to like hurt people's feelings. Um, and, but yet it taxed my brain because I'm in my forties. My brain is not as supple as it once was. New neural pathways are being forged in order for me to be very clear. Like I'll know people's names, but I won't necessarily know their pronouns. Like I'm adding one tiny little piece of information. How hard is that? It's actually not hard, <laughs> but it is hard because I don't have those neural pathways trained for that. So at my age, building those newer neural pathways are hard. So then you get older people that are just obnoxious and like decide, well, you know, what are you or your boy or girl, whatever that story is, because you're taxing my brain and my brain has been developed over millennia mm -hmm. to not think about new things. Give me my pattern so I can recognize it and move the fuck on. Mm -hmm. So to begin to actually revere that or be like, you know what? Okay. And then when it comes even to, into our broader discourse, you're going to have people who are listening to this who are going to be like, oh, this guy's like ridiculous or whatever. It's like, I probably am ridiculous. That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, my feelings aren't hurt by, you know, by that. Um, and where I'm wrong, like, great, you know, I'm, I'm not done here. That's why I'm saying there's no answers. Um, but as you kind of begin to sort of formula, like, go ahead and actually push yourself out of that comfort zone. Like, what about building a new neural pathway that says, you know, you might see somebody who's got a beard and also has breasts and let that be like, go ahead and short circuit and then build a new, a new neural pathway to allow that to be okay. Mm -hmm. That'll be pretty interesting and it will be hard. And you might have to like go eat a piece of pizza afterwards because you're going to be hungry because your brain just had to build a new neural pathway <laughs> and be okay with that. Mm -hmm. That's what I got for you. Well, thank you, Matthew, for having. Or we'll definitely, we can definitely go more into this um, another time, maybe on my political podcast. Definitely when the strike is up, and we can go into all the movies that that re that relate to this and why that's an issue in TV and film. Um, but it was good to talk about it, and definitely in um, this video game context because I think it's it's important, and obviously, like the majority of video games are combat based. Uh, like that's the thing. I mean, there are, I mean, I feel like to an extent farming is originally seen it. Like there's also farming simulators and you can play as women and that, but I feel like farming is to an extent something that's still seen as technically masculine, quote unquote. So I don't know. It's like, how, how far do you go when you finally find something that's feminine? Um, so that's the thing. We'll see. Good questions. What's, what is yeah. feminine? What is masculine? And I think Jung says, as, as as I think the perfect part about the kanji is, you gotta accept the feminine side of yourself. You gotta accept the other side of yourself. You gotta accept we ha everyone has. We all have access to all of our this parts of the gender binary on ourselves. If there is such a thing, and we have to accept the men have to accept their feminine side. Women have to accept their masculine side. Yeah. Some women even need to accept their feminine side, and some men need to, and then some men need to accept even more their masculine side. It's like. It it, it, it it what you actually embody is all about you it's not like you are going every man every man is going to be this every female is gonna be, i'm i'm i i'm i don't i'm not into generally masculine things i guess apparently video games are still technically masculine these days even though they're i feel like there's a lot more women come out as liking games and stuff so i don't really know anymore <laughs> what i am I'm, 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 I'm very care i'm a very caring very loving person so i generally have a lot of feminine energy myself so but I'm basically mostly straight. So who knows? Like, yeah, this, these are, these are the interesting things we talk about. Well, I'd love to definitely have you on again, Matthew, you're a good friend. And, um, it was good. Um, it was good to have you. All right. Thank you. It's been yeah. philosophy. Yeah. Game philosophy. Peace. <laughs>